G'day guys and welcome to the very first episode of this modeling tutorial series. We won't actually begin the modeling process in this tutorial, I just wanted to explain to you some of the add-ons and techniques that are going to be commonly used throughout the series. Don't worry, the add-ons are nothing drastic, it doesn't completely overhaul the way Blender is used, it's just going to require a little bit less manual input from us throughout the process. I wanted to make this tutorial series as way back in 2013 when I first started to learn how to use Blender, all I wanted to do was to be able to model the Master Chief's helmet. As you'll see on screen right now, that was my attempt at the time and it is rather abysmal. I didn't realise at the time that it actually required a fair bit of modelling skill and a general knowledge base over Blender in order to do so. Secondly, there was no tutorials at the time that could teach me how to do this. So now that I have a handful more years of experience of Blender modelling under my belt, I wanted to go ahead and make this tutorial series so that any other people starting out in Blender, or even people that have a decent amount of experience in Blender, can follow along in a tutorial step by step to model the Master Chief's helmet should they have similar aspirations to myself. I by no means think that this tutorial is going to be very well suited towards beginner users of Blender. By all means, you can try to follow along. However, I would highly recommend that you go and check out Andrew Price's beginner tutorial series, learn the fundamentals and all the basics of Blender, and then come back here and follow along with the modeling series. Anyway, with all that behind us, I want to just cover a few things about the add-ons we're going to be using and some of the very basic mechanics of Blender, just to make the experience throughout the series a little bit more consistent for you all at home. So, I'm just going to show off something very common that we use here, which is the space operation in the Loop Tools add-on. So you notice here we have a whole lot of vertices along this edge here, but they're all spaced out in a very strange way and we you know, could go ahead and use edge slides to fix all these up, but that would take a fair bit of time and we probably wouldn't get it completely even. So what we can do with our loop tools add-on is go ahead and space these out. And if we do this for all these edges around here, I'll just worry about these ones because they're the ones in sight. But now notice we have nice even spacing between all of our edges. So that's what the space operation is going to be helpful for in keeping our topology nice and clean throughout the series. Another useful thing that we can do with this is that, say we just want to slide this down a bit, we've got a nice little curved edge here. But say if we wanted it to be rounded, we could go ahead and once again we could try and use some edge slides to try and smooth this out, you know, do some pushing and pulling of the vertices to try and make a bevel out of these. But it's not really going to look that nice in the end. And yes, we could always just grab this edge and just do a bevel on it straight away and that would achieve the same result. But so it wasn't an exact bevel that we wanted. We didn't want this nice, like just perfectly rounded edge. We wanted sort of a more curved shape to it. What we could do is selecting a few vertices back and selecting this base vertice here, we could use the relax operation offered in the loop tools add-on set. So if we do that a couple of times here, you notice now we have a nice curved fall off on this. It's not quite like the bevel, it's just a nice curve that follows along. So that's what the relax tool is going to do for us. And it's once again, much like the space operation, going to be used a lot throughout this tutorial series. Normally I'll use the space and relax operations in tandem. So space out a whole lot of vertices and then go ahead and relax them if they are curved. Next thing I want to cover is the bull tools add-on. So ball leans are fairly simple at a baseline level. If we wanted to do a ball lean on this at the moment, we could select the ball lean and then we would say that we want to use this object here to cut out the shape. Problem is we can't actually see the ball lean at the moment because this object is covering it. We could hide it and then we could see where it is. Or we could go ahead and in the viewport display properties, we could change this to be the bounds and that would allow us to see it. However, that's a little bit more work than we want to do, and we do use ball leans a handful of times throughout this tutorial. So instead what we could do is select the boolean object that we want to cut out, select the object we want the cut out to occur, Control Shift and B to bring up our bull tools menu, and then do the difference between these two objects. Great thing about this is that it does all the setup that we just did a second ago, and since we're using the difference brush operation, it doesn't actually apply the ball lean straight away. So now we can go ahead and move this extra object to wherever we want on the mesh, and just do the ball leans as we see fit. So it gives us a little bit more creativity while we're modeling and it's a nice non-destructive way of doing ball leans. Next thing we wanna do is not an add-on, but it's actually inbuilt to Blender. So if we just tab into edit mode here, we have this snapping set of tools at the bottom here. So if we wanted to correct this edge, 
this was a cube, but I dragged out this edge and now, you know, I could try to eyeball it and, you know, top down orthographic view or something like that and get something pretty close. But, you know, we're probably not going to get it right because we're just eyeballing the details. What we could do instead is with our snapping tools, we could ch change this to vertex. And what we'll do, if we select these two vertices at the top here, we can do G, X, hold down control, and then you'll notice we get like a little snapping icon around the vertices we want to snap to. So we can snap it to that one there, hit enter, and then we have a nice 90 degree angle again, and it's fixed it up. We could also use the edge form. So if we selected one of these vertices here, we could also go ahead, G, X, and snap to this edge. So it's going to keep that in line. Since we're moving along the x-axis, it will just follow along this edge. So that one's not too helpful. But if we just wanted to snap it to this edge here, that's now done for us. Another part of the snapping that is rather useful and we will use later on in the series is snapping to faces. So if we wanted to rotate this cube to this plane, you know, we could do a 45 degree angle because that's pretty much what the curve is on at the moment. But if the, say we didn't know the exact rotation of it, we wouldn't be able to match it up exactly. Or, you know, we could get it close, but it wouldn't, it'd probably be a little bit off. What we can do here is using snap to face is, well, at the moment, it's not going to do much. It's just going to move the point of the cube along this angled surface. It's going to keep it consistent, but it's not quite doing what we want because we want, remember, this 45 degree rotation on the cube. But in case we didn't know what the actual angle was, we just want to be able to have Blender calculate that automatically for us. So what we can do is we can do a line rotation to target. If we do that now, you'll notice we get a nicer result. But we sort of get inconsistencies with where it's snapping to. Sometimes it's on the inside, sometimes it's on the outside. So what we're going to do is I generally work with the snap width set to active. And then when we hold down control, it'll snap the cube to wherever we put our cursor. Another thing to note, it will snap to wherever the origin point of the object is. So if we go ahead, just tap into edit mode, select the bottom face here, put the cursor to selected, and then do the origin to our 3D cursor here. Now as we snap it, it will snap from the base of the cube where we've set the origin point, and we will now have that rotation nicely aligned. Next thing I wanted to cover is the knife tool and some edge slides, as these are also very common parts of the modeling process that we do in this tutorial series. So if we go into edit mode here, we can use K to cut in some detail. So at the moment, if we try to do a straight line, you know, we could try to get something relatively close. I think that's pretty straight, but you know, there's no guarantee that it's going to be perfect. What we can do is using K again, we can press C and now it will snap it to 45 degree increments for us. So we can do that. So let's make a cut across here. And that's nice and straight now because we use C. However, if we wanted to use an edge slide here and adjust the positioning of this edge, you'll notice that it will sort of start to snap to whichever edge we push it towards. But say we wanted more curvature in this edge slide as we're moving it up. But you'll notice we only get more curvature as we push it right to the very edges, or it only becomes straight as we push it further down here. What we can do to rectify this is doing an edge slide with double tapping G. We can press E, and this will set it to snap to one of the edges. So at the moment, it's snapping to the edges at the top here, which is denoted by that little blue dot. If we press F, it will now snap to the straight face at the bottom. So I press F again, it will snap to the top row of edges, F again, the bottom. So this is rather useful as we try to fix up our topology throughout the series. The final part of this is that you'll notice we've got another plane down here. But this detail that we cut in didn't actually appear on this bottom one. If we go into top-down orthographic view, if we go into wireframe, you'd expect that, you know, if we cut in some details here, since we're in wireframe, it would cut down into the bottom one, but it won't. Instead, what we need to do, if we wanted to cut through the mesh with the knife tool, we'd press K to get the knife tool, and then we'd press Z, and that will allow us to cut through the mesh. So now you'll notice we do this, and we have the cut 
going through this mesh into the other mesh. So one of the final things I wanted to discuss here while we're in Blender is our quick favorites menu. You'll probably have noticed when we were doing the space and relax operations at the start of the tutorial here, I was bringing up this little quick favorites menu. I have this bound to my Q key. If we press Q, that will bring up our quick favorites menu. So this is the way I have it set up as these are the most common operations I use. You are more than free to copy this for this tutorial series. If you have your own workflow, by all means, go ahead and use that. Um, I'll just show you very quickly. So if we wanted to add something new, say in the select, if we wanted to do the select all by trait, and we wanted all of these plus the little drop down, we just right click on this and we can add it to our quick favorites menu. So that is that. And then the final thing that we are going to be using throughout this tutorial series is an external application called Pure Ref, which is just going to house a bunch of reference images that I've put together for you all, which is going to help with modeling the helmet as the orthographic images that we use aren't amazing as far as detail is concerned. So it helps throughout the process if we can look at some more detailed images, uh, some different angles of the helmet, uh, which will help us influence our modeling process. So with that all said and done, I will leave you guys to get into the first episode and we can start modeling the visor for the helmet.